Hi everyone, Samantha here, the Huga Stitcher. Welcome to my home here in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. And welcome back to my channel. If you are a longtime subscriber, you will notice that I am in a new space today. I have been working with my husband um, to create this space. And he came up with this really brilliant idea of with the floating shelves so that I can interchange my pieces behind me here, which has been really, really exciting um, to have my collection of framed pieces together in one spot and so that I can enjoy them. It's, it's really exciting. So I'm here filming today um, to share with you all of my latest projects and to share this new space with you. And I'm just really excited. So I'm going to jump in and start off with my book of days. It's how I start all my floss tubes. I really enjoy this book and I enjoy stickering and I enjoy writing out what I'm working on and planning on what I want to, want to work on in the future. So here's the month of March. Last time I filmed a floss tube was actually in February. I went back and um, my last video was February 7th. <laughs> a long time. Um, my girlfriend and I have been working on a year of a dragon cell, Erica with Fibers and Floss Canada. So we filmed a couple of ep episodes with that and that's been really fun. And um, I wanted to make sure that I kept track of all of my projects that I've been working on since then. So I can share with you all, but we'll talk about the year of the dragon cell a little later on in the video. Um, but in the month of March, beautiful stickers, having fun decorating and working on my projects. Um, and now we're in April. So I chose some really um, pretty flowers and some things that kind of reminded me of spring, some butterflies and bees and things like that. Really fun. And boy, do I have a lot to share with you today. Um, so I'm going to go back to February um, when I had... I had some really big goals for myself. Um, started in January. I have been um, working on getting up to 30 projects. And it's been a challenge, you know, just figuring out what patterns I wanted to stitch, but then also to get those 30 projects into a place where they're not all starts, right? I have some that will be near the end and some that will be in the middle, and then some that are new starts. So my goal is to get to 30 whips and to have 10 projects in the finishing stage, 10 projects that are in the middle, and 10 projects that are in the beginning stage. And I'm excited. I'm not quite there yet. I still have some work to do. I'm hoping over the next couple months I get to that point. Um, I'm currently at 29 whips. I have a couple new starts here to show you today. Um, and yeah, this was one of the ones that Holly, she's from the Pixie Couture collection. And I believe I started her, let me just take a look. Um, Holly, I started in October, 2023. So fairly new. And, um, she was something that I was just like, you know what? I, um, I, I've had this pattern in my collection for quite some time and I was feeling in the holiday spirit and I wanted to to work on her and I've made excellent progress here she is now yeah I was able to complete the stitching um, all of these berries basically everything from here down is done I have put in her legs, I backstitched everything, um, I added in the sparkly crinic, all the little wisps. So all that's left from here down is just the beading. And then I have some work to do up top. I have her wings left and I think a little bit more of her hair. She's gonna be so fun. I could finish her this year, no problem. No problem, she was a fun and easy stitch. And just like really enjoyable, her colors just pop right off the fabric. This is a 32 count antique white linen. Actually, it's even weave, Lugana. Really fun. So I'm excited to get back to her soon. Maybe for Christmas in July, maybe I might get those wings on there and get her to the point where we could do some beading. <laughs> That'll be fun. That's another one of my goals too. Um, I have quite a collection of Mirabilia and Nora Corbett designs. And if you've ever done one before, you know, starting one, it's exciting, get the colors in there, 
build, you know, get the face and the skin and all of that, maybe some wings. And then it gets to the point where you're adding crinic and then at the very end, you're doing the beads typically. I mean, sometimes I have done um, some patterns where I bead as I go, depending on how big of a project it is. But lately I've been leaving the beading to the end. And if you go from that process from start to finish and you, you're beading at the end and you're like, great, project done. And then you move on to the next one. It's like starting all over again, that whole process. So I, you know, and that's the part that it's like, oh, you don't get that like feeling like, oh, I'm halfway through, like it takes a long time to get to that point. And I wanted to have some of my Nora Corbett's, some of my Mirabilia's to be at different stages so that I could have some that were at the end. And if I felt like beating and finishing it up, I could. And if I wanted to work on one of my mirrors that are halfway done and, you know, I'm getting the feel for this project and it's getting exciting, um, then I have some of the, at that stage too. And then some of the exciting brand new starts phase. So that's also been a goal of mine to get some of my projects, um, all of my Noras and all of my mirrors. In the last year or so, I have been trying to start them all <laughs> and get them going. Oh boy, and that's really exciting. Um, so the next project I wanted to share with you, this is Emerald City by Owl Forest Embroidery. I'm getting very close to a finish. I have two parts left. So here we go. I'll show you where I am. Look at that. Ah. So the last piece that I worked on um, was the wizard and the monkey with the wings. I'll bring it in closer for you so you can see. Um, Oh my gosh, this is so fun. So I added in this little charm here. So this is just a Mill Hill heart. It's kind of um, sort of a frosted heart, but it's flat. And when I was sort of playing around with the idea of what to put there, I had a couple of different charm options. And I had decided to go with this one because it fit perfectly where the heart would have been stitched. This fits in perfectly, just like this charm did, the bell. There was a gold bell stitched in this section and it was the exact same size as this bell. So I thought that's perfect, I have to use that. <laughs> and then I added the heart um, charm in there. So this has been really fun. Look at how sparkly this is. I've added in all of my own, um, you know, leftover beads that I had from other projects and added them into the stitch. I've added Krynik to add some sparkle. Definitely Emerald City, I wanted it to be extra shiny and blingy and I think I've captured that effect with using crystals, Mill Hill beads and even some petite beads in here too. Same color and yeah what fun. Oh my goodness can you imagine one day you guys this is gonna be up there. <laughs> this is gonna be up on my wall and be so proud. I have been working on um, the Owl Forest Embroidery free patterns, the, their stitch alongs. So this was the first one I had done, Emerald City. I have done and completed Alice in Wonderland, and I'm currently working on Treasure Island. So I'll have three, you know, really beautiful pieces that I'll be able to display that kind of go together, you know, like they're different obviously, but they're, you know, from books and, um, you know, childhood stories, really fun. What do you think? Isn't this amazing? I love this one. And I'm kind of going to be sad when it's finished. Like I'm excited to wrap it up, but I'm stretching it out. <laughs> I do one piece and then I put it away and then I'll work on something else. And then, um, you know, I, like I said, I just have two more pieces left to go on this one. So something fun about this space is that, um, you know, I've got a couple of pieces up. These are some of the um, designs that I finished many, many years ago. Um, most of you know that I'm working on the Nora Corbett Pixie Couture collection and I have three of them framed right now and my plan is to get all six finished and framed all together. You know, it'd be really cool to frame all six of them up there together. Um, but also I thought it would be really cool to um, switch it out. Like if it's Halloween and I want to work on or display my um, Bewitching Pixies by Nora Corbett. I have six of them. They're not all finished yet, but one day they will be. And it'd be fun to be able to switch them out and put my Halloween themed projects up. Or if I want to display my Owl Forest embroidery, maybe maybe around Halloween time or something, I could also have a section of time where I want to hang up my, you know, Wizard of Oz or 
if it's Christmas time and I want to display my um, reindeer and sleigh and Santa. This could be a lot of fun to be able to interchange and change them out um, throughout the year and filming with you and sharing with you um, some of my different pieces. So that's that's exciting. So up here, um, you have seen in the past, I've shown these all many times. There is the shipwreck of from Mirabilia, not the shipwreck. It's is it called the Siren of the Shipwreck, um, Mermaid, and Map of Hawkron Hollow. One of my most favorite pieces. I'm gonna bring in the screen up just a little bit so I can so you can see it. Um, yeah, and then the letter S. This used to be in my bedroom, and now it's it's downstairs. So it's really exciting to be all together in my little space, in my little space. I also have one more um, mermaid beside me, which is Mermaid of Pearls, which isn't quite up on the wall yet. I'm still trying to figure out where I wanna put it. I'm thinking um, maybe in the corner here, or I have another space over here that doesn't have anything on the wall yet and no storage. Let me see if I can show you. There's a spot in the hallway there that we wanna get some shelving and maybe it'll go there. Look at those lights. It'll look really great underneath those um, those lights. So we'll see. <laughs> Still, like I said, it's a work in progress. And um, yeah, hold on a second. I'm just going to get this right here. <laughs> uh, one of the fun things about this new space is that, um, you know, getting to film and to share with you all is really exciting. Ugh, and I'm just working on getting it all right. <laughs> All right, well, let's move on to the next project. Let's see here. We have Summer Quaker by Leela Studio. Um, here is where I am on this one. Made some really great progress. I'm actually hoping to move this into the middle stage. So this was a start last year in August, 2023. And I'm not, I'm not at that halfway mark yet. I'm figuring once I get like all the way to the cross, maybe get this on that side, um, then I would say that that's getting closer to the 50% mark. Maybe a little bit more stitching down here. Um, but yeah, once I do, I'm gonna move it into the middle, right? I'm trying to get it out of the start and get it into the middle um, so that I can get my 10, 10, 10. This has been so fun. Oh my gosh. This fabric I'm working on is a 36 count. It's called Sky Blue by Hand Dyed by Rolanda. And I'm using DMC floss, all two over two, and it's giving it this really plush stitching. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Look at the crabs. I finally got that uh, motif in, this Quaker. Um, that was exciting. Cause these colors on the fabric just like pop could be fun. So um, I started a stitch along with this one. It's called Live in the Sunshine Cell. And there are people who are still using the hashtag and sharing their progress on this stitch. And if this is something that you're looking at today saying like, oh wow, I would love to stitch the summer quicker. Um, you can jump in at any time. I'm going to be stitching this for a couple, like for this year, probably next year. Um, so come join me and have some fun. Use the hashtag year of the drag, um, not year of the dragon, <laughs> live in the sunshine cell and come join. I'll actually pull out the picture here so that you can see the whole thing. I should have, I should have done that. What's so great about this new space is I can grab all of my things. It's all right here. That's exciting. So here is the picture. I leave a studio. I'm a quicker. Look at all of the sea creatures all around. There's crabs, there's lobsters, there's seagulls, there's sand dollars, crows, there's fish, a whale, mermaid, octopus, like it just goes on and on. There's so much in this and the colors are so fun. Oh, I love this design. It's really enjoyable to stitch on too. Like I, 
whenever I get in the groove with that one, I can just keep going. You know, <laughs> there's been times where I'm like, okay, I got to stop. I got to put it away because I've worked on it for a week and I want to move on to something else, but I'm having such a good time um, with these Quakers. This is another one that I'm working on. I haven't made any progress on Spring Quaker yet, but I'm dying to get this out. Um, now that it is spring, I want to stitch on it some more. So maybe on my next update, you'll see um, some more progress on Spring Quaker. There we go. All right, next up, this is a big stitch. <laughs> this one is called Rapunzel and I worked on Rapunzel for almost two weeks. I was really, this was another one that was a new start for me. I'm just gonna look up, actually I started her, she was my new year new start in 2023. And I had completed her hair, um, not her hair, her face, and her hair up at the top here and a little bit of this blue dress not very much and so it was at that start i'm trying to get it out of there i'm trying to get it into the middles and um i made some really great progress oh, i can't wait to show you yeah <laughs> look at her wow i just went to town i went to town with these colors how fun, you know, I've been trying to describe to you all how I stitch a Mirabilia and how I tackle one of their designs. And basically what I do is I, I like to find the darker colors in the, in the design and I tend to stitch those first and it almost creates like this section where it's like, yeah, you can see that it's almost like a circle. And then the inside is the next color and then the next color in the center, right? So it's kind of goes like from dark, lighter, 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 the lightest. And you can see that here, even in the pinks, get the dark pink in and then the medium pink, the light pink, and then the lightest pink. That's how I stitch a Mirabilia. And this was so fun to do. Um, my goodness, I even got some of these green colors in here. This is 730, 731, something like that. And I was able to stitch, I think it was from right about here down, all of this hair. There is so much 310 in her hair. It's interesting because right here is all 310. But when you hide it and you show this, this is full of 310. But it also has the browns in there and um, you almost don't see the black anymore. Isn't that interesting? Even in here, this is all black right there. Um, and it's almost disguised when you um, pull it back and you see all the brown um, in there. It just looks like dark brown. Wow, Rapunzel. Isn't she beautiful? Oh my gosh. And there is still like, I don't know. I think I could put this in the middle stage now. There is still so much hair to go. And you see that beautiful arch that goes up at the top and the letter R for Rapunzel. This is so pretty. <laughs> I worked on it for two weeks. Couldn't put it down. Really, really fun. My next project is actually a brand new start. So I have been working on the Pixie Couture collection and I have been working on them since 2009, 2010, somewhere in there. I had started collecting them and started stitching them. The first one I did was this one here. Second one, third one, and I have completed Tiger Lily. Um, I'm working on Bluebell, and this is my last pixie. This is Poppy. Poppy came out in 2008, and I'm trying to create a rainbow of pixies, basically. I've tried picking one from each color of the rainbow, and this is the red, um, red design. This is Poppy. I had decided to stitch them all on 32 count antique white lace, um, antique white linen, and um, so that they'll all match. They're all gonna be framed in the simple um, metal frame, and I'm excited. Look how far I got. <laughs> Brand new start. So this picture shows you a lot of the red, and I haven't stitched any of it. I'm saving it for the next time that I pick this up. I have stitched her skin and her face, her hair, and did I complete? 
I think I did complete her wings, except for the beading and a few wisps. So there's gonna be beads in between here, which is gonna look really pretty. Oh, and there's some crinic in the front of her dress. What's so cool about this pixie is the way she's, you know, standing. This is the back of her, you know, we see the back of her and her, her wings in a different angle and her dress, which is really, really beautiful. So those reds are going to be amazing. I have the um, floss away bags. There's not very many colors left in this design. Um, those are all the reds that are going to be in there. Wow. And that's the sparkly crinic. This is number four braid 001 HL, which is the high luster. And really, really fun to put in the design. She's going to sparkle. <laughs> oh. So still need to do the back stitching on her, on her skin, but that will come. I just really wanted to get her shape in there and then to have that exciting um, point next time I pick this up was to stitch those red colors. So that'll be really fun. But isn't she looking beautiful? Well, let's see, I only worked on her for four days and then I put her away because I, I've been wanting to, over the last month, um, I've been like on a Mirabilia kick and I just couldn't stop. I'm like, I wanna stitch on them all. I wanna start them all. I wanna have um, everything Mirabilia. <laughs> Mira May is coming up and I um, plan to participate in that as, as well. Um, but I wanted to, you know, get all of my projects started. That's exciting. So the next one I worked on um, was Bluebell. Also from, this one's called Spring Garden Party Collection for Pixie Couture by Nora Corbett. Came out in 2009. I was drawn to this design because of, you know, sort of the umbrella effect of her holding those flowers above her head there. It's so pretty. And her wings are amazing. Her wings are amazing. And I can't wait to share with you, you know, I, last time you had seen this, I had stitched the wings but I had not done the back stitching yet. So this all, her whole wing is stitched in Krynik. All of these stitches are in Krynik and then even the back stitching is in Krynik. Ultra sparkly. There she is. She is actually, all of her stitching is complete. All I have left is beads. And beading is actually one of my favorite parts of, you know, you have all these blank spaces, all these little spots where they're just empty and you just look at your pattern and you're like, fill it in one at a time. And it's so satisfying to go through the pattern and go through your design and fill in those empty spaces with those beads. It's like it, it comes to life. You know, this is already beautiful on its own with just the stitching, but it's like, once you add all the beads and the bling, it is like, <laughs> okay that's how it was meant to be even um she does this really cool effect with some larger beads that will fit into these spots that kind of look like dewdrop you know water on the on the flowers gosh she's pretty ah, this is so fun and isn't she gonna look great you guys up here one day <laughs> with my other pixies oh exciting really really fun okay so next that's bluebell um, the next one I've worked on was Shakespeare's Fairies by Mirabilia. Now I'm going to go back and see when did I start this one? Shakespeare's Fairies, September 2023. Longtime favorite of mine. This was one of those patterns. Okay, when did this one come out? 2009. Okay, this is like right around the time when... Um, you know, I fell in love with Nora Corbett and her designs was right around that time. Um, my girlfriend had Erica, Fibers and Floss Canada. Um, ever since we've been stitching together, since we were 16 years old, she was working on um, a lavender and lace piece, which is Nora Corbett's mom. And when she was designing back then. And um, this was, you know, kind of like, we knew we loved that world of lavender and lace. And we were just starting to like look into Mirabilia. I'm like, oh, I'd really love to stitch. And Erica had stitched a couple of her designs, but I hadn't yet. I was still, you know, working on uh, one of my first pieces that I ever did, which was the Teddy Bears Picnic. 
and I was just like, okay, if I'm gonna try one of these, maybe I won't go so big, you know, to start something like this. So I had started this one. That was the first one that I ever did. And um, once I had gone through that process of like, okay, I can do this. I can read the chart. I can stitch one of these. I could add Krynik, never used Krynik before. Oh, I can figure out how to do the beads, did all that. And then I was ready to start tackling some of these bigger projects. And um, this was one of those designs that when it had come out, I fell in love with it instantly. I knew I had to stitch this one day. Um, so, you know, over the years, I used to do the thing where it would just be like, I would stitch one of them from start to finish. And then I wouldn't even buy another chart until I was ready to start a new project. And then I would go to the store and I'd pick out something new. And that's how I how I used to stitch. And now um, I have, you know, a lot of the time these older charts, not this one, but there are charts that go out of print. And so now I've started this, like made a personal list for myself of my personal favorites that I must stitch in my lifetime, right? And this was one of them. <laughs> And I had picked up the chart. I took a long time trying to decide what fabric to use. And I'm stitching it on a 32 count. Um, picture this plus, it's called Nocturne. And this was a big change for me. I usually stitch on called for fabric. So, but I wanted her, the Shakespeare's fairies to look like the night sky. You know, I almost wanted them to look like they were out trick-or-treating. I know those are lanterns, but it kind of reminds me of pumpkins. And, you know, they're fairies in the night and this fabric does it justice. Oh, it's so amazing. And it is a little bit different for stitching for me. I'm working on Picture This Plus for a Nora Corbett, but it works. You know, I'm not going to complain. I, I love the way that it's turning out. Uh, I think it's amazing. And I do have another project that I have kitted up that is also in Picture This Plus fabric, different color, and I'm excited to give that one a, a go soon. Um, yeah, just to get it a start, but this is where I am on Shakespeare's Fairies. I, I did a ton on this. How long did I work on this one? Only a week? Boy, feels like a little longer than that, but um, I worked, I must have just been in the, oh yeah, I was in a groove. So same thing, I've been describing to you all about how I stitch a mirabilia, and I start with the darker colors and work my way into the lighter blue, and then this was just all fill in, which was really fun to, fun to do when you can just sit and watch a movie and fill it in. Don't even need to look. Just go back and forth. I also completed her wing. I hadn't, I think I'd only done up to about here, so I finished her wing. I also was able to put in um, the wing that's from the girl beside her in the center here. She has a wing that kind of goes behind her, um, the first fairy's face, behind her head there. And what was really exciting about that one is I got to use a different Krynik that I hadn't used yet. I'm gonna show it to you. Um, it's probably like my most favorite color yet. So fun. It is 034, it's a number four braid. I hope this shows up. The different colors that are in there, it almost blends, but it is got hints, well, there's black, gold, blue, and pink. Oh, the effect on this, <laughs> it looks so cool. Um, all the other wings in this design have that Krynik. This one didn't, this one had a different color of Krynik and all the other wings have that color. Look at how cool that is, wow. So this, this one still has a ton more of her dress. Like it looks like her dress is done, but it's not. See how it, there's two more lanterns there and then her skirt really kicks up. So not quite done on the first one yet. I have collected all the beads, all the treasures for this design. And the more I look at it, and the more that I have looked on Instagram at other people who have stitched these and on Facebook, um, I have decided, well, I haven't, I haven't decided, but I've been contemplating, you know, see those green leaves that are in her dress and in her hair? The, the ones in her hair are kind of bothering me a little bit. The one in her dress, the, um, it basically would be like on her chest here. I like those ones. But the ones that are in her hair, I'm just like, hmm, I might change that when I get to it. I might put flowers in her hair. The other girls have, one of them has a flower, like a rose in her hair. The first one at the front. She's got rose, a rose in her hair. 
and I'm thinking I might, maybe I might change that. We'll see. That's still a long time away. I've got lots of time to think about it before I get to that point where I'm attaching those, those treasures. But I love the idea of maybe putting flowers in her hair. And I've done it many times. Like Rapunzel has tons of flowers in her hair. Um, they go, they go well, they make sense. So there we go. Shakespeare's fairies. I told you I was on a Mirabilia Nora Corbett kit and it's not over yet. <laughs> I have another one here. She two more. Um, this one is the next one I worked on. This is the Woodland Fairy. I am working with Amber, Rogue Mama Stitcher, Sarah from um, Memphis Sarah E. We started a stitch along called the Woodland Fairy Sal and we're stitching this together. We, um, we, we have been meeting for our Zooms once in a while. We've done two so far since the beginning of the year. Um, but our third one that we had was right around market and I know Sarah was really busy and um, yeah, we just weren't able to, to meet up next month, but maybe we will soon. Again, that was really fun. I enjoy stitching with them and chit chatting with them um, because you know, it's kind of like neat. They're, they're floss tubers too and um, they love Mirabilia. So we have a lot in common and we have a ton to talk about whenever we do get together. It's like, wow, two hours went by already? Oh my goodness. <laughs> so we're having a lot of fun together. Um, I can't wait for us to, to meet again um, and to do that. But I thought I would make some progress on her. I've been wanting to, um, she, she didn't have a face last time we saw her and I wanted to get her face in. This always makes the picture like come to life. So here she is. I stitched her skin and I, um, I back stitched her face. I didn't quite get to um, the rest of her skin because there's still some more stitching around. Like obviously there, the wings need to get put in. Um, there is some more stitching down here that I need to fill in um, before, I, before I complete that. And there's some, it's almost like she's holding flowers near her chest there. There's like a little bundle of flowers in her hand. So I gotta get that in there too um, before I can complete all of the back stitching for her skin. But I thought, let me get her face in you know, you stitch the lips and you, um, with, with DMC floss, and then you also stitch the eyes and they look so silly, like, you know, just an X for a lip and an X for an eye. And it looks really funny, but once you get the back stitching and it like comes to life, it's really fun. I always go really slow when I'm stitching the face, um, like the back stitching portion, because sometimes like even when I was looking at the chart, you try, you backstitch one little thread and you're like, hmm, doesn't quite look right. Let me take it out, try it again. Okay, and it's like, you just need to move over just a slight little bit um, to make it come together. I don't know, it's hard to explain unless you've done it, um, but the eyes and the eyebrows, the eyelashes are done a different way. The eyelashes tend to have um, two strands instead of one. And yeah, she looks great. So her hair is done. Man, I I can't wait <laughs> to get the the wing on this one it is so beautiful. And do you see her back there? Her back has a little bit of um, the skin tone mixed with blending filament. That so it kind of gives that like yes, the wing is see through. How cool is that? I can't wait to get there. And there's so many fun colors still to add in this design. See all the pinks. In the ribbons. I started a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit right there because I'm just trying to get that shape, everything that touches the wing, because I think I'm going to do the wing next. We'll see. Maybe I should save the wing for last. I don't know. You know, <laughs> there's still lots of dress to stitch on this one, but she's coming along. Really fun. Here we go. Okay, so the last one of my Mirabilia's I just started a few days ago. This one is the Butterfly Fairy by Mirabilia. This was a gift, um, a floss tube watcher. <laughs> one of my viewers <laughs> had reached out to me when I had met my two year floss tube, um, floss tube anniversary. And she had reached out to me saying, I have a pattern that you don't have that I think you, you should have in your collection. And she wasn't wrong. I absolutely love this design. 
she's a fairy. She's butter. I love butterflies. And um, she's holding a magic wand, which is, I'm always drawn to that. And now that I've started this pattern, I want to tell you, this is the first mirabilia that I've done. Like, I think, like, she might be the largest one I've ever done. Not so much like the stitch count, but look at how big she is. Like, I don't have, like, even my Mermaid of Pearls, she's long, but I don't think she's as big. Like, her face and her arms and her hair and everything is just really, really large <laughs> in a good way. It's just, I've never stitched one this big before. Um, so I had decided, this is the first time I've ever done this too. I decided to start her at the very top. I found the middle of the chart, went down, you know, did the, did the math, how many inches down do I need to go? How big is the fabric to get her centered? And I started at the top. What? <laughs> and I'm stitching her on the called for fabric. Let me just double check what the called for fabric is. Um... Let me see here, I gotta take it off this board. I wanna describe to you too, how I stitch a mirror belly. Like how do I take it out of the package and how do I stitch it from this large chart? Um, so the fabric is 32 count country French latte linen by Witch Elt. So how I manage the mirror charts especially if it's a long chart. This one actually surprised me when I opened it. This is a pattern from 2004. And I, like I said, it's really big. And um, when I opened it up, like the whole chart is on one side of the paper. And typically it's like, see, the back side has nothing on it, which was shocked me. Usually the pattern will be like cut in half somewhere at some point and flipped on the other side of the page. So you do have to go back and forth. You know, it has that that line where it's like shaded and it says like this is duplicated on the second page or whatever and this one didn't have that this was just all one big chart which is actually really really awesome so I use a magnet board and I just fold my chart onto the magnet board like so wherever I need and I use my magnets that came with the magnet board and stick it on. And sometimes what I do too is I will make a photocopy of the thread list and um, symbols and just cut it out of the piece of paper and stick that to the top of my chart too. So I don't have to flip around and try to find like what's that symbol and what's the number because then you have to take it off the magnet board and you know fiddle around with your paper. <laughs> but I do love these large charts. Um, so in the past, when I've had charts that are um, double-sided, what I tend to do is I find the the, um, the darkest symbol on the sheet. So it, usually it's like a black square or a black dot or let's see, um, maybe a black heart. And it will be that symbol that will kind of carry me through. Like I'll start at the top uh, on the first page carry that symbol down. And then if I notice that symbol is flipped over on the other side, I'll actually flip my chart and complete that whole color. Because to me, it helps guide me. You know, that's my like staple, like that's my point where I'm like, okay, that's where I was. And when I flip that, when I go back up to the top, I'll find another color and start at the top and work my way down. Oh, okay, time to flip. And I can see where my other stitching is, um, the symbol that I have already completed and kind of landmark that way. That's how I do it. I have in the past done that like cut right at the line. Like I will stitch everything on the first page and nothing on the bottom and stitch the other, I've done that too. And I've had no issues with that. You know, sometimes I worry about the line, like if it creates that line of like, you can almost see, see a line in your fabric. But um, I don't know, I, I just didn't have that um, in the past, it's never, it's never shown. But you know, it's something to think about, you know, you can do it both ways, but I like to use that dark symbol in the pattern to guide me and carry me through both pages and yeah. Just do it that way um, but this one's great I will just have to I can just like stitch at the top of the pattern and work my way down here I am I am getting the colors in her hair a lot of the spaces in here are from um, 
you know, leaving a spot for beads. I don't know if you can see a little bit better there. Um, yeah. And you can see around her neck, there are some, there's going to be some beads there as well. Without the back stitching, it looks a little silly, but you can see like, this is what Nora Corbett's gift is. You can see the different shading, even in the cheek, in the cheek there is like light pink. And I don't have the eye color in yet. I think it might be navy blue. This is going to be so pretty, but look how big her face is compared to like all the other, you know, here's another one. Look at the difference. Do you see what I mean? This is going to be huge. <laughs> excited about this stitch. So this has just been a couple of days of stitching and um, I'm going to keep it on my Q-snap. I'm going to work on it again um, for a little bit longer, see how far I can get before I move on to another project. Like I was telling you, Spring Quaker is calling my name and I think that's what I might work on next. Um, but yeah, that was um, the last new start. So I think that actually brings me up to 30 whips. Either 29 or 30. I'm going to have to count again because <laughs> I think I'm really close. I think Storyteller was 28, Poppy was 29, and Butterfly Fairy should be 30. So that's exciting. Wow. So now I'm just working on getting my projects into the 10, 10, 10. So where I am with that is um, I currently have 11, 12. I have 12 starts, 11 middles and seven finishes. Hope that math, math, that math matches up because <laughs> that's what I've got here. Uh, but you know, over this, over this last month and a half, I was able to move Rapunzel into a middle, Shakespeare's Fairies, Holly, I was able to move into the ending stages of the design. That's exciting. Wow. All right, so my last project that I want to share with you. So I have I have lots still still to share with you today. I have um, I have some stitchy kindness um, times two. I have a couple of stitchy kindness um, things to share with you. Some new things to my collection, um, but this is my last piece that I have stitched since the last time we saw each other. So this is Teresa Wensler, the storyteller. Now this is for the Year of the Dragon Sal that I'm working with, with Erica Fibers and Floss Canada, as well as so many others who are sharing their progress on Instagram. It's really exciting um, seeing people jump in and join the hashtag and have some fun with us. Erica and I have been filming um, special floss tubes where we um, are together and sharing others progress and our own progress on the Year of the Dragon Sal. So I hope that you will join um, and watch those as well. Uh, they could be for anybody. You don't have to be stitching a dragon to enjoy the video. I think um, it has a lot of interesting topics and things that we talk about throughout the video. And we're taking turns. So last month it was on my channel and this month it's on Erica's channel. So you, I'll post a link below so that you can catch the latest episode we just filmed um, earlier this week. So uh, yeah, here's mine. Here's my Year of the Dragon cell. I am stitching. I made great progress actually. I'm stitching this on 28 count um, platinum linen. And here I will show you where I am. I have over the last month completed all of the green stitching here. Um, last time you had seen it, I had done the first set of like the back of his wing where it is, you know, green and then it goes to the navy, dark navy blue and then I had stopped. And now I'm doing the um, second part of the wing and did all the green, almost all of the greenery. I'll show you the picture again. There is still, um, you know, a lot to do in that part of his wing. And I'm excited to get to it because I'll be able to add some colors that I haven't stitched yet. So those would be like the pinks and the purples and the yellow. It's gonna be fun. Hoping that next time you see this, I'll have some more progress done. I'm trying to, you know, stitch on it before we do um, a Year of the Dragon video um, and get some progress done. So every month you should see changes. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish this project this year, but it's always gonna be a goal to keep going on it um, throughout the whole year. Super fun. 
I have some really exciting stitchy kindness to share with you all. Um, a lovely viewer, Colleen, had reached out to me um, about a month ago and said, hey, I have some um, fun patterns and things that I would love to send to you that I've either stitched already, um, aren't going to stitch, and I'd love to share with you. And um, when she reached out to me, I was really excited about that because I had no idea what she meant. Like she didn't give me, oh, I have this and I have that that you might like, like a name of a pattern or anything. It was just a complete surprise, a box of stitchy kindness. And when it had arrived, um, my daughter and I, we sat on the couch, we opened the box together and it was just one at a time, pulling out this, pulling out that, you know, looking at different things and just getting really excited. Um, there was lots of really neat things that she had, you know, included in her parcel that my daughter and I were both like, oh, look at this, look at that. You know, she's like, oh, I would love to stitch this one. We just had a blast. It was like a half hour of like going through all these different patterns and designs of different fun things that I could add to my collection. So firstly, I wanted to share some of the things that she had shared with me. Um, these are little thread um, bobbins. You know, it's got the little spot here where you could put your thread on. Some different designs. These are so cute. I don't have anything like that. There's two of those. There's two hedgehogs. Cute. And um, two kitty cats. Look at how cute these are. I don't know where she got them from, but she said, these are some treasures that I use in my collection and I thought I would share with you. How fun. Yep. And then also there's this really cute wooden heart that you can stitch on. That could be fun to do too. Really cool. So thank you so much, Colleen, for those. Um, there's so much more. She, she left me a really nice notes inside, um, inside her parcel of different things. Um, you know, she had some fabrics that, um, you know, that either she had like used partially for a different design and um, wanted to share with me. So this was really exciting. This is a piece of 25 count, I believe, um, Lugana. Beautiful, beautiful color. I'm sure I could find something to stitch on that. And she also shared with me a piece of 40 count. This is my favorite. This is my favorite fabric. I, <laughs> I have many uh, choices of patterns that I've stitched on this. This is um, Country Mocha. Um, linen 40 count look how beautiful that is she said i'm not going to use it you know she um typically has bought in 32 count fabrics and this was a 40 count and said that it was too challenging to stitch on and she wanted to share with me and i'm going to put this to good use colleen i'll find something special to stitch maybe a couple of projects it's quite a big piece of fabric um oh yeah these are cute too so this is um a couple of pumpkins i believe that's Lori holt um, and then these are, you've seen these, the milk tags. Those are so fun that you can also use to put on, um, your thread and store on a ring just like this. Cute. I'm really excited about these to be able to find the perfect little project, um, so that I could use those. And here's some patterns. I'm just going to start going through. This one is Bluebird Garden. By artfulofferings.com. Cute. I love this one a lot. It calls for um, Weeks Dye Works linen called Putty and it uses gentle art threads, but it also has a DMC conversion too. So I have lots of um, little pieces of linen that I would love to stitch this one. Oh gosh, this is so cute. I love it. Love, love, love. And then I don't have any of these patterns. So Stitching with the Housewives, this one's called Hello Frosty. And I have to tell you, when I first started watching Flosstube, Chelsea and Priscilla were my, were my introduction to Flosstube world. And I believe that a lot of people, you know, find floss tube through them. Um, they are fun. They have beautiful, you know, beautiful designs. And also, you know, the home tour <laughs> of um, Priscilla's house that they do, you know, in the summertime and in the winter and in the spring and things like that. So um, I've always, over the years, I have enjoyed their channel. And, but yet I have never stitched one of the designs. So this is really, really cute. Look at the snowman. Hello, Frosty. And that cute, is that a fox or a dog? It looks like it might be a fox. Cute. 
snowflakes. So this is so fun. <laughs> this is so fun. You know, it's almost like going through someone else's collection and, you know, seeing what they have purchased and, and stitched over the years. And this is really fun. So some things I might do as giveaways later on throughout the year. And some I'm going to stitch and some I'm just going to add to my collection. Um, this one is Lori Holt, Bee of My Bonnet. Um, it's called Bringing Home the Tree. And when I first pulled this out, I'm like, I'm familiar with this design. I've seen people stitch this on Instagram. Oh, that is so cute. Love it. Next up, we've got Fourth Day of Christmas. This is by from Hello from Liz Matthews. Another bird design. How beautiful. I've, I've stitched one Hello from Liz Matthews design before, and that was the one with the rainbows. Do you remember that one a few years back? It had all those multiple rainbows in it, and you could stitch them in whatever colors you wanted to. I have completed that one, but haven't fully finished it yet. That's one of the things uh, that's so great about this new stitchy spot, is I've got some drawers down here um, that have my past finishes in them. So this is something that, a um, little side note, little something that I'm working on. So here's my pile of finishes, right? I have gone through these before with you all. Um, I may do this again, um, but there's, I don't even know how many, there's so many finished projects that need to be framed, finished. And this is what I'm really bad for. You know, I finish a project, I fold it up, I tuck it in a drawer. And now I've got this problem where, you know, the pattern has like those fold lines in them. And so it's a goal of mine over the, hopefully this new space will inspire me um, to get these out, you know, maybe one at a time, two at a time and wash them, um, dry them, pin them, you know, get them sort of flattened out and straightened out. Um, and then I can display them up top here. Um, so I'm going to be working on this beautiful stack of finishes that I have in my drawer here. Um, let me see if I can find it quickly. The reason why I thought of that was because of, here it is. There's the stitch that I did um, from Hello from Liz Matthews. And I had stitched my rainbows in skin tone colors, which I thought was really fun. And I added beads. So I, you know, I want to finish this into maybe a project bag or finish it into a little pillow or something. Um, it would look really cute displayed back here as well. So that's fun. I love the little drawers in the, in my bookshelf here. Okay. Back to the stitch kindness <laughs> sidetrack. So here is a heaven and earth design, which is something I have never done. And my girlfriend and I were just talking about this, how we would really love to give one of these a go to get into that world of heaven and earth designs, a full coverage piece, I've never done one. This could be my first one. This is called Freebie Harmony. Harmony. And it is a beautiful parrot. Look at the colors. That could be a lot of fun. You know, I see a lot of heaven and earth designs where it's like you start in the first top corner and it's a lot of dark stitching, right? You know, it'd be like the background or whatever and the fun color in the center. This one has that, but in a different way. It's like, you know, you're still getting some color. There's some light blues and greens and, and things like that before you would get into that beautiful red, pinky color um, for the parrot. But this could be a lot of fun. <laughs> this is so cool. So I'm adding it to my collection. This is a stitch. Um, what is this one? Seasons Collection, Scandinavian Christmas. Cute. I love all the different, you know, how it's kind of got the band at the top and the band at the bottom. Look at those reindeer and the little heart. That's cute. And then obviously those um, center motifs would be really fun to do. You know, one ornament at a time, the reindeer in the center. Merry Christmas, love it. <laughs> and then here's some really fun ones. This is um, Lori Holt's stitching cards. So you got the boat, train, airplane, car. Cute. Snow, um, Starlight Snowflake, I love this. Colleen completely spoiled me. Citrus Summer. 
like I don't have anything like these in my collection, which is so fun, you know, um, to be able to add this to my stash. And, you know, if I'm like in the middle of summer and I'm like, oh, I want to stitch something different, something new, what should I start? I could just go shopping in my own little section here and find a new chart, grab a piece of fabric. You are my sunshine cross stitch. It's so Emma. Beautiful. Look at the beach house. Really fun. Okay. Happy farm girl. My daughter saw this one was like, oh, mom, I want to stitch that one. It's cute. <laughs> and she totally could. It's got a DMC conversion back there. Really beautiful. Okay, here's a couple of treats that she put in here. These are two Mirabilia charts. This is must have been how she thought of it. I don't have this either of these. This one is called Athena, Goddess of Wisdom. This is MD95. Does it have this the year on it? Sometimes they have the year written down. I don't see it. One of her earlier charts for sure. Look at the colors in there. And she's holding that beautiful owl. This is gorgeous. Absolutely going to add this to my collection and stitch one day. For sure. Same with this one. This one's called Archangel by Nora Corbett. This is MD81. This is really rare um, to come across a design that has a male in it for Nora Corbett. There's not many of them. I think there's actually only two, maybe three. This one came out in 2004. Before I started getting into the into the Mirabilias. But somehow I'm drawn to the earlier charts. I'm drawn to, you know, the ones that were designed in the 90s and the early 2000s. I have favorites that have come out now, um, the newer releases, but I tend to be drawn to the older designs. Cool, hey? Yeah, thank you so much, Colleen. And then um, there are more. There are, you know, some of the charts over the years that she's printed that were freebies. This one is a free chart for Thanksgiving 2019. Thankful Every Day by Heartstring Samplery. That twist. Cute. I love it. That would be fun to stitch with the variegated floss for those pumpkins. Very cool. Here's a Christmas Advent Calendar by Tiny Modernist. I think I remember people stitching this when it came out. And I've always wanted to do an advent calendar. Um, you know, you do one motif a day, right? Like, so day one, you do the snowflake. Day two, you do the gingerbread. That could be so fun to do. Um, and there's many more. There's, um, you know, Mystery Stitch Along, all the trimmings by, um, I believe this is Fat Quarter Shop. Um, this one's really cute. Um, I don't know the name, but that is a cool design. I actually really like that. It's got that sampler vibe to it a bit with the bee skips and the hive. And that one has a chart, can't show you. Okay, so also inside the box, this was really fun. Had a bunch of magazines, a whole bunch of magazines. And so this was where my daughter and I were just like flip, 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 looking through all the, all the different designs. It also came with um, 2024 calendar. Um, but there are some really adorable charts in there. So it has the calendar and then also has these six charts in there. Cute. Yep, keeping that. And then um, the world of cross stitch, the world of cross stitching. Here's some Smurfs. And each one of these um, magazines has tons tons of patterns and fun things to stitch. I'm also one of those people who love to like wake up in the morning and drink coffee on Saturday morning and look through a magazine. I find that fun. Like just want to flip, take a little looky-loo, get inspired. So these are really fun. I want to get um, for my space here a little one of those little like Holders that you can put your magazines in and they all sit upright and sit in the shelf. I don't think I'm gonna get one of those. Here's some more Smurfs. Christmassy designs. 
just cross stitch, fall stitching, pretty. Oops. Um, cross stitcher. Beautiful, the world of cross stitching. Look at all these, <laughs> so fun. Oh, I love this one. This one's got some adventures of Peter Rabbit. Cute. That is so fun. It's a deer. Halloween stitching. Last one here. Cool, hedgehogs. Cute. Thank you so much, Colleen, for thinking of me and um, for sending me this generous box of goodies. It was really fun. It was like Christmas morning, opening up and going through everything. So I really appreciate that. It was super fun. And I appreciate you for watching and for reaching out to me and for sharing all of your um, stitching with me. It's wonderful. So um, I want to go on. I have a couple more things to show you. I go to a guild meeting uh, in Winnipeg here and they always have a giveaway table and they always have prizes that you can win. And this was at the giveaway table. This is um, just cross stitch Halloween 2020. And uh, like, as soon as you look at this, you're like, oh yeah, I've seen that one. You know, it was all over floss tube uh, when this one came out and there are so many fun projects in here. I'm excited to have this in my collection now because you know, you just never know when you're inspired to, um, to start something small. Um, they have lots of little black cats. There's all kinds of different stitching in here, but I'm just excited to add this to my collection. I also had um, a table mate reach out to me and say, hey, I have a Teresa Wensler, the fantasy sampler that I wanna share with you. And she gifted this to me. This is a beautiful Teresa Wensler chart in beautiful condition. Oh my gosh. Amazing, like it's an amazing condition. And this I'm absolutely going to stitch one day. I have two Teresa Winslers on the go right now. So I, I'm too scared to like try another one right now, but I will, I wanna get one under my belt and finish one and then I'll, I'll start another. Um, and another table mate of mine um, had some Teresa Wensler magazines that she wanted to share with me. This one has an exclusive design, um, this pillow here that has all the florals, really cool background stitching. That's pretty. And then she shared with me the Teresa Wensler Dragon Ride. So this is a magazine that has Dragon Ride in it. I was so excited when she gifted this to me. I was like, wow, I'm 100% gonna stitch that in the next few years. <laughs> and then she also gave me this amazing gift. This is the Best of Teresa Wensler Sampler Collection book. Look on the back, it's got all the charts that are in here. So there's like a house sampler, there's a peacock garden sampler. This is a Christmas one. There's see the sled and the horse. Oh, there's a wedding sampler, there's a birth sampler, and then the dragon, dragon sampler too, which I already have, but still very cool to have it in magazine form or sort of like, um, it almost feels like magazine pages, but this is a book. Each page is really well like laid out with colors and it also gives you, oh, that's so cool. So it also gives you pages where it shows and talks about each pattern and a nice, beautiful picture of it finished. So again, this is just beautiful to look at for one. And for two, I believe that working from one of these books would be really enjoyable to do. Yeah, I should do this already, but. Cool. Again, it's like Teresa Wensler has been designing, had been designing for years and years, um, decades, you know, where she had been releasing patterns in magazines and at stitchy stores. And I believe her patterns were like readily available at like places like Michael's and Joann's and things like that. Um, so you could get them. And many, many stitchers have um, these charts, you know, from the 90s in their collection. And now it's like sort of this new obsession for me now that I'm doing these dragons and I've done Lily Maiden um, by Teresa Wensler. It's like, I'm diving into this new world 
and um, excited to start collecting. And people have reached out to me and passed along their charts that maybe they've finished before or aren't gonna stitch and shared them with me. This is awesome. They're really fun to start collecting. It's fun to collect, isn't it? Okay, I think that's it for me today. I've gone through everything. Um, I, actually, one more thing I wanted to share with you is that I'm going to be starting a round robin. Um, this is with two other floss tubers. So myself, um, the Huga Stitcher, and Erica, Fibers and Floss Canada, and Sarah, Lady Lugana. We had been, you know, talking back and forth about the idea of doing a round robin with the three of us and coming up with different ideas, you know, how do we want to do it this time around, you know, we've seen what other floss tubers have done and other stitchers have done and like, what could, what could we do and what would be a good pattern? And we came up with an idea of um, sharing one of our projects. So um, I've decided which one I'm going to do. Um, do I have it up here? I've tucked it already in a box because I have to ship it. <laughs> I said I was already going to ship mine and I haven't yet. But um, I'm going to send off one of my patterns, the bag, the pattern, my, my floss, my fabric, everywhere that I am. And pass this one on to Erica so she can stitch on it for, you know, a couple months. However long, you know, maybe two months, three months. And then we're going to pass it along. So um, it'll be something that I've stitched on something that Erica will stitch on and then she'll pass it on to Sarah and Sarah's going to stitch on it and then it'll get sent back to me. And it does not need to be finished when it comes back, but it is, you know, it would, I thought this would be a really great pattern for my choice um, for me because um, Halloween at Hawthorne Hollow is a pattern I had started when I first started my floss tube almost three years ago now. <laughs> And I've made great progress on this piece, but it is going to be something that's going to take me a long time to finish. And I'm okay with that. Um, but I thought it'd be actually a really cool story to be, you know, something I started when I started my floss tube. And I've passed it along to other floss tubers. Maybe they complete a, a section or a, a block and pass it on to the next um, person. So I thought that would be really fun to do. So I'll show you where I am so far. You've seen it. If you've been following me, you've seen you've seen my map of um, my Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. This is a forty count legacy. Picture this plus legacy linen, and here I am. I'm on my fourth block. So Erica, when she gets this, she could either I I'm leaving it open to whatever they want to do. She could pick this up and complete this block if she wanted. She could move down and create a block over here or stitch two blocks whatever she wants to do move over on this side stitch the middle i am game for whatever that's exciting ah so i'm excited to see you know after i ship it off um what erica is able to accomplish on it and then i'll be excited to see what sarah is going to be able to accomplish on it and then it'll be even more exciting to get it back and get fired up and want to stitch on it some more too and make some progress so yeah, we're start, and I have no idea. Um, Erica's shipping something to Sarah, and Sarah's shipping something to me, and I have no idea what um, they have decided to to ship. So it'll be excited to um, to see that and to open it and to get started on whatever project they decided to share in the round robin. So that's really fun, and I will share with you hopefully in the next video um, what I have received from Sarah and any progress that I've completed on that project. So that will be super, super fun. Um, let's see, what else did I have on here? I'm gonna be working on Spring Quaker pretty soon. And there's a hashtag for Spring Quaker as well by Leela Studio. We're using the hashtag Spring is sure to follow Sal on Instagram. And if you are wanting to join, you can jump in at any time. Um, use the hashtag, share your progress. I'm excited to see um, what others, how, where they are in their stitch and things like that. So I'm going to do that right away. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think I covered everything. Thank you so much for joining me today and for joining me in my new stitchy space as I start to get more comfortable in this new space. And um, Hopefully over the time here with us, you'll see things change around here as I get, you know, get more comfortable in this space 
and um, get some of those finishes that I have in my drawer um, washed and stretched and all the things and it'd be fun to change them out and change the scenery back here for you all and for myself to enjoy. Thanks again, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed this episode and I will be back next month. Talk to you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.